What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to probably the weirdest video you'll see this week. This is Windows. It's got Copilot installed. It's got Microsoft Edge, but it's slightly off. Something's wrong with this. Well, what's wrong with this is that this isn't actually Windows 11. This is Linux. Very weird. In this quick video, I'll be showing you probably one of the strangest Ubuntu custom distributions that you'll see that you could technically skin your own Linux operating system to look like. This is Plasma, the desktop interface, and it's got a Windows skin on it. But this operating system, Ubuntu, as cursed as that is, comes with pre-configured Wine and a couple of Microsoft apps, if you could call them that, installed, which you can see over here. We've got Copilot Edge pre-installed, a link to all of the Microsoft 365 offices online, PowerShell included, as well as only Office, so we don't need to use the internet to interact with Word documents and stuff like that, OneDrive, Power Toys that isn't actually Power Toys, and a bunch of other things skinned to look like what you'd expect, including a snipping tool, comes with Steam pre-installed, etc. But if we scroll down and open up the Task Manager equivalent, System Monitor, you'll see that we're actually on Windows Ubuntu 11.4 with KDE Plasma as our desktop interface, etc. This is probably one of the strangest hybrid kind of things I've seen out of the box. Of course, you can skin your operating system to look like this, but this is all pre-configured. Get. You'd usually need to install Wine to get Windows apps and EXEs and things like that working, but here it's pre-configured. So if I open up Edge, as cursed as that is, yep. When we get through the intro, I should be able to Google search something. Yep, there we go. Let's download something like Audacity, which I'll download the Windows version of as such. And with our pre-configured Wine, you'll see that just opening the EXE in the File Explorer, sort of looks like Windows, also has the correct icon in it. It'll download whatever it needs for Wine as such, and we should be able to install and use Windows apps as you'd expect. Now, this isn't anything crazy. This isn't anything specific to Ubuntu. If you install Wine on any Linux operating system, such as even Ubuntu, you can get Windows apps working pretty much out of the box. Now, of course, Wine will have its issues and certain incompatibilities, but it's come an incredibly long way, especially since a few years ago. This is probably one of the closest out of the box representations of Windows that I've seen. It might even be stepping on Microsoft's toes. But anyways, it's kind of crazy. Copilot works too. If we open this up, we can chat with Copilot pilot. It's really just the website version, but we can ask it anything here and it looks like it's Windows. The one major thing that I can see this being used for is scam baiting, as it really does look like Windows, but it's just a little bit off. And of course, all of the settings are just normal Plasma interactions. The only cool thing I suppose is when you download it, it comes with pre-configured Android. If I have nested virtualization, that would start here. Comes with OneDrive, as well as a bunch of Office things installed and things either skin to look like the Windows equivalent or just has the icons changed in some icon pack. It's definitely strange to say the least. This is cool and all, but here's the kicker. This is a free operating system, technically, but their included system settings and things like that is all part of their Power Toys, or so they call it. Not to be confused with Microsoft Power Toys, a completely different suite of tools for Windows that includes many different useful things you might use, like I do, such as highlighting the mouse. So yeah, it is kind of stepping on Microsoft's toes in a lot of cases, but the one really bad thing about it is that the Power Toys this comes with, which gives you these skinned settings and things like that, is just a free trial for the most part. When the free trial is done, I assume you won't be able to open up the Windows themed settings control panel thing, but of course you can still run your EXEs and stuff under Wine, maybe even still use OneDrive, I don't know, but it really just does seem like a bit of a gimmick. If you really want to, you could head across to their site and purchase a key which costs $35, or you could just install a Windows theme on an existing Ubuntu or other Linux install, just as long as you have Plasma, Cinnamon, etc. Let's say you want to install this cursed operating system. Well, in the description down below, you'll find a link to Ubuntu.org. Simply click Download Free Edition or Downloads Free Edition up here, and you can download the Windows 11 Plasma theme, the Windows 10 Cinnamon theme. Scrolling down further, you can also download the Linux FX Red Sand Plasma LTS version, which just doesn't have any of the icons, themes, or Microsoft products included, but it can run EXE and MSI programs using Wine pre-configured and also has their paid power toys thing. For this video, I'll be using the Windows 11 theme, so I'll download it here. And this takes me across to SourceForge. I can download the latest version and it'll download an ISO file. I can either use in VirtualBox 
Xbox Hyper-V, or of course, put it on a USB to put it onto a bare metal system, but I won't be doing that. Now to get this to work in Hyper-V, which is my virtualization software of choice, in here I'll simply create a new virtual machine. I'll call it Ubuntu, and I'll choose where to save it. I'll make one right here. Generation 2, starting memory, I'll give it maybe 8 gigabytes. I'll turn off dynamic memory. I'll connect it to the internet and everything else I'll leave as is. I'll choose install an operating system, browse, and select the ISO I just downloaded here. Now, once it creates and configures, I'll enter settings. And to make the installation process a whole lot faster, I'll make sure it has a bunch of processes and everything else should be fine. I'll turn off Secure Boot and everything else seems fine. Perfect. So we'll start it up and connect to it. And if you see the grub screen, just hit exit. I'll enter Ubuntu Windows 11. And there we go. We're booting. Just like that, we're now on the main screen here. I'll install the system. Not that it's really necessary. The installer is very Windows looking and clicking through it. Everything else is fine. Sure thing. And that's good enough. But install it and wait for it to finish. And man, oh man, does this installer have some goofy pictures. It'll need to restart. So we'll do that. And we need to take out the ISO. So file settings, DVD drive, and yeah, it's out. Good enough. I'll hit enter to continue as the drive should already be disconnected. And there we go. We're now at the login. So I'll enter my password, which is shown in plain text, login. And now we're on the main screen. So the absolute goofiest thing about this is that the settings screen here is just themed to look like the Windows settings screen. And if we actually click anything, it just opens up the Ubuntu equivalent, which is pretty funny. Anyways, we've now installed our cursed Linux version. Oh, that's not happy. I need to click keep. Oh no. Oh no. I was too busy adjusting OBS. Oh no. This is terrible. Let's try again. Settings. Yep. There we go. Keep. So while this is really just a weird thing that might come and go, it seems like it's stepping on Microsoft's toes for some things, such as icons, logos, etc. When you're starting up the thing, it looks like Windows. But beyond that, it's really just a skinned Ubuntu with a fancy settings menu, kind of, and a pre-installed skin, as well as a few different pre-installed applications versus the normal Windows install. So if you're really curious about it or just want to prank some friends, scam bait and things like that, you'll find this linked in the description down below. But besides that, probably just better off downloading and setting up Ubuntu yourself, maybe not Windows themed. But anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting, if not useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.